Okay, so we've got our glassware laid out. We need a waste container. Notice everything is labeled. We need a waste container, a uh, container to mix our solutions in, the iron and the thiocyanate ion. Um, need distilled water. Um, we need approximately 30 mils of each of the two uh, reagent solutions. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's important to keep track of the cap as well. Maybe I'll just write down on there. This is the iron cap. Anyway, so this one's potassium thiocyanate. Um, I'm going to equilibrate my glassware. Now what that means is I'm going to rinse it. The reason why I'm going to rinse it, and I'll just use a, a pipette flow. And I'm rinsing it down the sides. And the reason why I'm going to rinse it is that maybe there was some water left in there, some contamination of some kind. And so it, it minimizes the amount of uh, cross-contamination you might get. Okay, so this is waste now, because it's my rinse. And so I'm going to throw it away into my waste container. And so I will just dump that into there. That is waste. So I want 5 milliliters of potassium thiocyanate in each of my test tubes. So, okay, so that's all the uh, test tubes with their 5 mils. They should be approximately the same level, not perfect maybe, but approximately the same level, indicating that there's the same amount in each. Um, the other thing that, uh, that equilibrating the glassware does is it minimizes the amount of loss on transfer because there were some of these drips or drops or whatever, the moisture, um, from the equilibration step as well. And so that if you still have some after each 5 mil transfer, well, you had some after the equilibration step as well. And so you've minimized the loss on transfer by equilibration. There's my 5 mils of iron 3 plus. I'm going to put that in test tube A. You will note the immediate reaction, chemical reaction. So here we go. So it turns a uh, orangey or red color. Um, I need to mix that, so I'm going to hold my fingers near about three quarters of the way up the test tube, near the top. Well, three quarters of the way up. Then I'm going to tick the bottom. Tick, 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 tick. Okay. So I've equilibrated my uh, 25 mil graduated cylinder. That's where I'm going to make my dilution, and I take 10 milliliters of my original stock solution. This is in the first dilution, I guess. 10 mils of my original stock solution. I add 15 mils of water, distilled water. So that's going to make it up to 25 mils. So let me just do that. Again, I'm just holding it up to eye level so that I can see uh, where I am. Let's see the meniscus better. And I adjust my level. with the pipe back. There. Now, since that has been equilibrated before, I'm again minimizing my loss on transfer. Um, it's not quite mixed, and mixing in these uh, graduated cylinders is difficult. So what I will do is I'll take my clean, dry mixing uh, beaker, and I'll dump it into there. Then I'll dump it back into the graduated cylinder. This is just a mixing process. Here. Again, it was wet before, it's still a little bit wet, so I've minimized my loss on transfer by my original equilibration step. Okay, so this is my first dilution right here, and I need um, 5 mils of that in test tube 2, or test tube B in my case. And so I want to use the uh, previous. 10 mil graduated cylinder. The smaller the graduated cylinder you use, the more accurate you are. And so, since this had a more concentrated solution in it, I'm going to use my dilution to equilibrate this glassware. So I will just rinse it a little bit. I'll just okay. Now we're on the second dilution, I suppose, or I don't know what step that would be, but I'm repeating the step again. And so, now these, uh, all this glassware now, has the first dilution, the first mix, and so it's all the same, any kind of contamination that might be there is all that same concentration. However, I'm trying to make a dilution here, so what I'm going to do 
is since this had that mix in it, it's going to be okay to measure with. And so I'll take 10 mils of this. This is my original dilution. Lucky, I got it on the first try, so I don't need to top that up. Anyway, so there's 10 mils. I will top that up to 25 mils with distilled water, the same as I did before. Um. Okay, I'm just on my last dilution here. Um, I've just put my 5 mils from here into test tube D. And so I measured the 5 mils in this container. So I want to transfer 10 mils into this, uh, when you're doing your successive dilutions, I want 10 mils of this material in here. So instead of just dumping out until I get to 10 mils, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump my 10 mils into this 10 mil graduated cylinder, which contained the same material a second ago, the 5 mils that I transferred into test tube D. Okay, so here I go. This is going to be 10 mils now, straight up to the top of the graduations. Got a little too much, so I'm going to use my dilution. There. Okay, so this is my 10 mils that I'll use, whoops, that I'll use for my final dilution, for successive dilutions. And so, this now is waste. So I'm going to dump this into the waste container because this is my 25 mil graduated cylinder that I used to make the dilutions. And that contained the same material as this, so I don't have to equilibrate. So I'll just transfer this into here. That's my 10 mils. Okay. So, now that I've done that, I'm going to add my water to here to get my 25 mils. Then I'll do my mix, then I'll take my 5 mils, equilibrating, and uh, add it to test UV. You'll note that the color is gradational from left to right. So in the first test tube, it's a little darker, and then a little lighter, 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 lighter. That is a serial dilution. You are making a, a dilution of the previous dilution. So. Okay, spectrophotometers come in two main varieties. Analog varieties, that's what this one is. Um, and what that means is that there's a, a sort of a dial in the background. And there are two scales on the dial. One's for absorbance, the top one here is for transmittance, percent transmittance. Um, <clears throat> effectively, what's in there is a little laser. Well, it's really a light source. And hooked to this dial, there's a diffraction grating, which converts the, uh, the white light, the light source, into the rainbow. And so we change the dial to set the wavelength. That's number one, and you can see. Okay, so we're going to set the wavelength. Yeah, there's sort of an analog dial right here. And we'll set it to 590 nanometers, right there. And the reason why you want to set the wavelength is that uh, the wavelength of light corresponds to its color, and certain reagents are will absorb uh, specific colors more than they will absorb other ones. And so you want the machine to be as sensitive as possible to the color that will be absorbed to the greatest extent. So, uh, before we set the spectrophotometer up to read the samples, we have to prepare them in cuvettes. These little test tubes um, are all very uniform in, in diameter. Um, if you want to know the effect of uh, the diameter of the column of fluid, I suppose, um, you can imagine that if it's a thicker diameter, and that's this uh, dimension here, as the light shines through, well, the thicker the diameter, the more light would be absorbed. And so you have to control the diameter very, very well. You could look up on the internet, it's called the Beer-Lambert Law, and that would uh, talk about that in more detail. Anyway, so my control is going to be this one. It is the uh, cyanate ion. It is one of the solutions that we used and I am going to equilibrate my glassware. And so, what that means is I'm going to rinse it, same as we always did, everything goes into the waste. So that rinse is going into the waste. Now I'm going to fill it up about two-thirds full. 
All right, well, that's enough. That's about half, I guess. Anyways, I'm out of, uh, out of my reagent, so that's good enough. Um, my control will be the same for every single one, um, so I'll just sort of keep that. And I will wipe it off on the outside before I uh, put it in the solution. So I, again, I'm going to equilibrate each one. I've already labeled my uh, container so I know which one's which. So I'll put my solution A, which is solution one on your handout, but anyways. Um, equilibrate first. It is important to um, equilibrate all your glassware and make sure that you don't throw out the remaining solution. Um, the reason why is so that, well, what if you drop one of these and you need to repeat your measurement, that kind of thing. So don't throw out your remaining solution until you're finished the lab. When you are finished the lab, then all, all the uh, solutions go in the waste containers. And in order to clean these, you dump them out for one. And you don't put a brush inside them. You don't ever put anything inside a cuvette. And so you just rinse it really, really, really well with distilled water. And now in setting up the machine, we've already set the wavelength. Notice it says number one, set the wavelength. We did that. Number two, it says with no tube, here's your sample uh, um, chamber. So there's no tube in there. With no tube, set to 0% transmission. So if you see on this scale right here, the top scale says percent transmittance. I'm going to set it to zero. When you're reading in these things, in an analog anyways, there's a mirror in the background. The reason the mirror is there is so that you can read the image of the needle in the mirror as opposed to looking at the needle itself. You're reading the image of the, of the needle. And so I'm setting that to zero. There we go. Number three says to put the control in there and then set to 100% to transmission. So my control is this sample right here. It is my uh, clear reagent. And so I'm using a Kim wipe. Kim wipes are, um, it's not really a Kleenex. They look like Kleenexes. They're lint free. And so they won't leave any residual uh, material on the contain on the test tube. So the test tube's got a little bit of moisture on it. In addition, it might have a, uh, a fingerprint. Fingerprints would interfere with the light traveling through the uh, sample. And so you want to get the fingerprints off of it. Now you don't want to touch that. Open the lid, put the sample in, push it all the way down, and close the lid. You want to keep that lid closed as much as possible because there's a very sensitive photo, uh, photo multiplier tube or photo detector in there. And so now I want to set to 100%, again it's the top scale, 100% transmission. And I'm looking in the mirror to see the needle. I'll show you the digital one after a bit. So there, it's ready to, to read our samples. So we're going to prepare sample A. This is sample A. I'm taking my Kim wipe. I'm going to wipe it off on the outside really, really well so that it's clean and dry. And I'm going to remove my control. And I'm going to put the sample in, pushing it all the way down, and close the lid. And now I'm going to take the reading. Now, the reading that I'm using is on the absorbance scale. Now, if it was digital, you'd have a digital uh, spectrophotometer. It works the same way. You set your wavelength here. Um, 590, that's an analog scale. But down here it says there's filters. Um, so we want to make sure it's on absorbance, that's this one. And we will set our control in. Now one thing I didn't mention before, um, I don't know if you can see this little mark. The little mark is there so that you know what direction you're putting the cuvette in. So I'm always going to have that little tick mark facing front in the sample chamber. So I'm going to rinse it off on the outside. I'm going to set my blank in, my control, and I'm going to set to uh, full scale. So, absorbance. It shouldn't be absorbing anything because there's nothing in it to absorb, no colored pigment to absorb. So I'm going to set it to zero. And now I'm ready to read my samples. Okay, so I'll get my sample ready first. This is my sample A. Again, it has a little tick mark on it to indicate the direction that I'm going to put the cuvette in there. So no fingerprints. I'm going to switch the control out with my sample, putting it all the way down, closing the lid. 